In this session, I want to show you a little bit of the evolution of the Tesla business model through the lenses of transitional business models, but we'll also go through how Tesla structured its distribution to, uh, to uh, grow uh, at the, the, the company that we know today. Now, a transitional business model, it's really a way for you to roll out a business model in the short term that is going to help you roll out a, a business model in the long term. In other words, you're actually using a different business model in the short term so that you can uh, use a reality check to validate the existing marketplace. And as the market evolves, you can actually uh, launch uh, new products and show to the market that you're able to mass manufacture uh, your own uh, products that you can you can actually launch afterward so like in the case of tesla tesla first started with them uh, with uh, the roadster and if we look at the, the way it entered the market instead of trying to go for the whole market or to show that he could uh, build uh, electric vehicles at scale by you know using billions instead what tesla did uh, with them um, still high budget but yet much much lower of uh, using a different strategy which is a strategy where you try to go for mass adoption red on is to niche down and bootstrap the uh, the, the first uh, the first model the first prototype so the roadster uh, was used by tesla to actually start rolling out its own business model and start proving to investors and to the market that it was possible to build actually a cool electric vehicle and from there it built upon this uh, this model where then it managed to launch new products and each new product actually was thought to uh, conquer and get uh, higher market shares of uh, the electric vehicle market which was growing together with tesla now the way the company has structured this uh, business model is quite it's quite interesting because first of all tesla is uh, more uh, mostly vertically integrated so the company over the years has spent a lot of resources in uh, integrating the whole uh, supply chain and the whole therefore uh, manufacturing processes therefore it could offer uh, you know a whole integrated experience from manufacturing toward to distributing directly the cars to to consumers in fact on the one side you have the tesla manufacturing plants and the tesla gigafactory which are two segments of the same company on the tesla manufacturing plant of course you have the cars who are manufactured while on the tesla gigafactory you have the chargers which are used uh, the, the the plants which are used to make the batteries but also the side of the business which is used to uh, to build a charging station across the world so that it could be easier for those cars to uh, travel around the world uh, travel around the country because as you can imagine imagine uh, like a gas powered car without having uh, gas uh, stations all over the country they would not be as valuable as they are and the same so tesla is doing so it has two segments of the business vertically integrated so the company is over time um, you know integrated and internalized those uh, parts of the business and then instead Instead of going through uh, middlemen, so through car dealership, uh, uh, Tesla has built its own online shop and its own physical uh, official Tesla store. So from here, um, uh, Tesla borrowed a lot from a company like Apple, where Apple has its own di direct distribution through its Apple stores, the same as uh, been done by Tesla. And this was not a simple feat because uh, you know, removing the middlemen of the car dealers from the market was not simple. Uh, actually, uh, Tesla had to build this sort of distribution from scratch. And that's how it gained direct uh, access to, to customers. And now Tesla is using other things, is leveraging on other programs like leasing offered by the company to actually improve and distribute and amplify the distribution of the business. Thus, it's very important again to understand that when Tesla first uh, rolled out its business model, it started uh, with a business model um, that niched down a lot because it uh, <laughs> produced a limited number of roadsters, which are sports car for a limited number of people in a tiny segment of the car making industry uh, actually in a tiny sub segment of the sport cars industry which are which were the high performance cars and from there it moved upstream the market until of course uh, toward 2025 or 2030 uh, 
Tesla is finally got to the point in which he could mass manufacture electric vehicles. And again, uh, he used a market strategy where it niched down to enter the market and it built an integrated, over time, integrated uh, business model where it internalized all the main processes from manufacturing to the generation of batteries and also the, the, the creation of supercharging station, which are critical, is the infrastructure, is the underlying infrastructure, which is critical to make the car valuable so the car would not be as valuable without also this this element and in addition to that the other piece of the the let's say the formula that tesla built is the direct distribution to customers so instead of going through uh, to the customers through a middleman like car dealerships uh, tesla cut them off and created its own online shop and its own physical stores following and drawing from the apple strategy and on the other side Tesla is uh, leveraging a lot on new programs. One of the most interesting ones is actually the, the leasing programs developed by the company, which can help amplify the brand a lot.